I remember. Do you know who you are? I'm the Avatar. Are you gonna deal with it? No 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 Hello there, my name is ER, that's spelled E semicolon R, and you may know me from such videos as Two Girls No Town, and The Gems Did Everything Wrong. Hey -ya! A little something about myself, I love Avatar The Last Airbender. It's one of my favorite animes. Hey, it was animated in Korea just like the rest of them. But as with anything well made and well liked, producers know they can sell shitty knockoffs by calling them sequels. And so the legend of horror was born. I dealt with it rather poorly. But in case you'd rather not watch an hour and a half of a guy's bumbling first attempts with a video editor. Fucking what the fucking fuck? Who the fuck? Fuck this fucking... How did you do fucking... Fucks... Fuck! Now, when I find fellow horror haters, I can divide them into four distinct flavors. Those like me, who find the show irredeemable in nearly every aspect. Those who are mostly ambivalent toward the show until they had their hetero lenses rudely knocked off. Those who consider the first two seasons, and maybe even the final season, absolutely terrible, but mistakenly find the third season alright. And those who hated everything, including the second season, but for some reason still like the Avatar 1 episodes. And to those people, I say... WHAT THE FUCK? What is wrong with you? Yes, there's a lot of bullshit in the second season. Believe me, I'm aware. I don't even know what to say. But within this season, I believe are two episodes with the most concentrated levels of bullshit. And those are the Avatar 1 episodes. Beginnings part 1 and 2. To me, they are pretty much the picture-perfect encapsulation of everything this show gets wrong. And guess fucking why. Wait, what? Tim Hendrick? The guy who wrote The Desert and the Ember Island players? Oh shit, tell me it ain't so. Fuck. So sit back, kick up a leg, and join me as I nitpick this shit out of these two episodes from a cartoon for children. This is gonna be rather informal, kinda like a watch along sort of deal, because I don't want to do a lot of editing. Let us begin. Let us leave? We're in serious trouble. This guy is nuts. Nick is fucking dead. Earth. Only the Avatar. This Aang statue still slays me. Excluding Korra herself and Republic City, it's one big fat dump on his legacy. And it front loads every episode. Roku and Kyoshi got these rinky dink totems. And Aang's got this ostentatious, fuck you Ozai, my staff is bigger, monument. And I got a bigger dick. I've learned to laugh at it. Really cheesy shoehorn gimmick reflecting Brian Kanitsko's heart on for the Roaring Twenties. It sounds as stupid as it is. Headed to the Fire Nation, seeking a new ally against Unala. Wait, against Ulala? She is washed up on a desolate island with no memory of who she is. It's a soap opera. I'm watching a soap opera. Fucking spontaneous amnesia. Not only is it just the laziest narrative device ever contrived, it's not even really necessary here. But you'll see what I mean. Wait a minute. Are those fire sages? Why are there more fire sages? Okay, there would probably be more fire sages than just those who maintained Crescent Island. It still feels inelegant. Oh my god, Azula? We found the Avatar washed up on shore. Wait a goddamn minute. Why is a woman talking? Why is there a female fire sage? Fire sages are supposed to be religious authorities. You know, part of a boys only club. But it looks like in the past 70 years, there's been a rise in affirmative action, hasn't there? It's amazing how diversity can destroy centuries old institutions in a handful of decades like this. Just like in my world. But she doesn't remember anything. Brother. So, chronologically, she's not supposed to know who and what Rava is yet, but you know, since she's an amnesiac, she can foreshadow her own discoveries, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Rava. Did she just set her hands on fire? Good people burning, good people burning, put your hands up. A dark energy has infected her. 
We must purge it before it destroys her avatar spirit. All right, what the fuck? Since when could firebenders use their fire to send spiritual energy? I sure as hell don't remember Iroh blazing it up here. <gasps> or here. You have been touched by the moon spirit. Some of its life is in you. Or here. I've heard rumors about your journey into the spirit world. No, he was just a level 52 guru master and a certified badass. Hey, does anyone remember that it used to be special when a character was so attuned to the spirit world and not every Tom, Dick, and Granny had that aptitude? Screw it, though! Let the waters cleanse the darkness that plagues your spirit. Oh, okay. Okay, this is apparently spirit water, which, you know, used to come only from the spirit oasis at the North Pole, probably because spirits resided in it. But now there's a pool of it on some bumblefuck Fire Nation Island, too. Fantastic. Not a big fan of the purple. Just doesn't fit with the color palette of the original spirit world. Who are you? I'm you, you, dumbass. Who am I? A cunt. I'm sorry they dragged you into this, Aang. I am so sorry. You are the Avatar. I don't know what that is. Never did, sweetheart. And Roku too. Oh no, why? In order to remember, you must regain your connection with your avatar spirit. But aren't you her avatar spirit? Isn't she her own avatar spirit? That's how it worked in the original show. Nope. You'll see. It's quite the surprise. If you don't, darkness will engulf the world. You will die. Yoshi, shut up! Just let her fucking die! How do I regain my connection? Go back. You heard him, Hora. Return to the beginning. Find Rava. Okay, back to why the amnesia is not even necessary. It's clear that Hora doesn't know who Rava is, but the thing is, she's never known. So what's the point of this? There's no reason that she need to forget her avatar-ness for this framing device. Aang never needed amnesia to hear about Roku and Kyoshi's past. They were lessons for him, and him expressly, not some empty husk that forgot who he was. Are you Rava? No, but I can help you find her. My name is Juan and I will show you how I became the first avatar. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because he's the first one? The, the first one? All right, right out the gate, I have a pretty big personal problem with Juan's world, and that has to do with the art direction. As you can plainly tell, the background art is stylized to resemble such things as Chinese ink wash paintings and Japanese woodblock art, which lends this ancient Asiatic-like world well, an ancient Asiatic-like feel. And that's fucking great! But the characters inside of it, on the other hand, look the exact same as they do in Korra's era. And why? Why change the look and feel of the environment, even animate certain things in that style, but then leave the characters as is, jarringly out of place? I hate to draw on what's probably seen as one of Avatar's worst episodes, <clears throat> even though it's miles ahead of this, but it pretty much takes this direction and does it better. The episode has two tribe leaders give their accounts of what happened in the distant past to set their tribes against each other, and their accounts are portrayed in distinct art styles, as depicted here. In the Gon Jin's account, the line art remains thin but is more rounded than usual, and the character art exudes a certain exaggeration, making Jin Wei look purposefully majestic and strong, while Wei Jin is sly and scrawny. And in the Zhang's account, you can see the background art has been given a more extreme makeover over, with thick, robust, and rather angular line art combined with block coloring and far less fine detail. The character art matches with a cartoony, proportion-defying emphasis, and American comic book-styled inking. The camera angles also use foreshortening and other perspective trickery to emphasize what is happening in each shot. Even Aang's account just cheapifies everything, and these styles lend a personality, a certain voice to the characters giving their accounts and the stories they are trying to tell. It all fit rather well, it's just kind of a shame that these 
particular stories had nothing to do with anything. But here we have all this vibrant personality wafting from the environment, and the characters simply do not match it. Why, for instance, couldn't they have been drawn a bit more simplistically, with thick airy line art similar to brush strokes perhaps? Maybe a little white left around the edges as they're not colored all the way in? That would have been really cool, but I suppose that's asking too much of the Avatar origin story, as opposed to an Avatar filler episode no one liked. <laughs> What are these, Russian nesting dolls? Nobody steals from the two brothers! Really? Because I just did. Seriously, he's a piece of shit thief. I have no reason to believe these guys are evil. None. Yeah, that's right, Aladdin. I'm calling you out, you little street rat. You're dead, Juan! Actually, I feel quite alive! <laughs> Hey, stop! Hot damn, Juan, forget the chews. Figure out what the birds are eating because holy gratuitous shit! Alright, he's just showing off. Little prick. Wait, is that what I think it is? Nobody steals from the two brothers! The two brothers! The two! The two! Oh my god, it's all coming together now! Mike confirmed for skinhead! Boy, man! Hey, fellas! You're just in time for lunch! Oh! This guy is an asshole. <laughs> Good maneuver, Gigachu. <laughs> Did you steal from the chews again? Yeah, and I got nothing to show for it except a few dirty rolls and a whole lot of bruises. Am I supposed to feel bad for some freeloaders living in a treehouse? Oh, Jesus Christ, kill with fire! Seriously, it would be super effective. Mmm, delicious. Thank you, one. You're welcome, Amon. You guys are hungry too, huh? Oh, because he feeds the animals, I'm supposed to think he's a good guy. Aw, it's not working. One, you should eat. Uh, they need it more than I do. What? Why? You're making it harder for them to be self-sufficient. You're actively hurting them. If only there was some way to get into the Chew's food cellar, we'd be eating like... Well, like Chew's. If Chew the Elder catches you sneaking into his palace, you'll end up dead. I fucking wish. Or worse, he'll banish you to the spirit wilds. Oh, don't get banished. You don't want nothing to do with those spirits. They'll get inside you, scramble up your mind, turn you into this... A monster! Yeah, but think of all the good pickup lines it's given you. Hey, you happy to see me, or is that just more wood? Is it cold in here? How about you, me, we rub together like faggots and warm things up? Ever drilled a hole in the trunk and drunk the sap straight from it? Uh, nigga, you gay! Don't do anything crazy, Juan. You just gotta accept the world is the way it is. Some people have power, some people don't. Because some people work for their shit, and some people hang around in their treehouse all day like freeloading shit bags. And you don't. Not yet, anyway. I don't believe in working. This place feels pretty empty, I gotta say. Not a whole lot of budget here. Are you strong? Are you fearless? Do you have what it takes to battle the spirits? Then, then join, join the, the hunt! Count me in. <laughs> We're going to be out in the wilds for a week. You wouldn't last two seconds. Oh! I can handle myself. We all get fire, right? What do you mean you get fire? That's not how it works. That's not how any of this- Yeah, but do you know how to use it? Well, not exactly, No! But... That's not how it works! Oh, let him come. Not like we got any other volunteers lining up. Fuck it!
Seriously, you'd think this guy would be public enemy number one with this horn of his. The Lion Turtle. Great guardian of our city. We are venturing into the spirit wilds to bring back food for our people. Please, grant us the power of fire. The power is yours to keep until your return. That's not how it works, mother- May the element of fire protect you against the spirits. Wait, do the lion turtles not like the spirits, or...? <laughs> oh, so he can use it immediately, without any prior training or foreknowledge or anything. So, great, the whole idea of bending as a martial art, a discipline, and an innate genetic ability completely wiped from the slate. You hearing me correctly? Aww. Bending is now a magic power on par with waving a fucking wand. No, not even a wand, really, since the Hogwarts kids still needed genetic predisposition to perform magic. No, this stuff is just free-for-all superpowers. Remember in the original show when bending was said to have been learned from outside forces? You know, through great trial and effort and it wasn't just given to humanity? When earthbenders learned it by mimicking the movements of the badger moles and firebenders mimicked the dance of the dragons? When airbenders picked it up from sky bison and waterbenders studied the moon's pull and the tide? But no, ER, that still happened. It was only in the era before the Avatar that the Lion Turtle bestowed upon humans this power. Ah, uh, no. In the era before the Avatar. And I will show you how I became the first Avatar. We bent not the elements, <laughs> but the energy within our senses. <laughs> not the elements. Yeah, well, still clearly this is how Bender genes originated, from the lion turtles bestowing the elements upon these people. Except Toph said badger moles were the original earthbenders. Zuko said dragons were the original firebenders. Not fucking lion turtles. Not these people. Did the lion turtles bestow the elements upon these creatures too? Well, it was ancient times. When the lion turtles disappeared, the old ways of bending must have been forgotten and benders had to relearn them via nature. Zuko and Toph and everybody else might be misattributing the origins without knowing any better. Oh, okay, so everybody's wrong in Avatar. Yeah, let's just go with that. Oh, except for the teensy weensy trivial little fact that bending here obviously takes no struggle or exertion at all to perform. I'll want us to do is punch the fucking air and boom a fireball to make Shota Zuko look like a flaming pussy. How in the fuck did Benders forget the old ways of punching the motherfucking air, huh? Tell me that. Uh, w well, it, uh, ex uh it, it explains how Korra picked up bending as a toddler. Yeah, yeah, it does do that. And there you have it, folks. This episode single-handedly retcons the entire bending system. Yes, Korra undermined it, and significantly, but here Wan actually invalidates it. The old system has been made into a lie. And this is part of the reason why I consider these episodes to be the worst of the Legend of Hora. That's right, episodes. Because the buck doesn't stop here. By part two, it gets even worse. A lot worse. But, let's continue with this episode for now. Just make sure you aim at the spirits, not us, okay? Sure thing. Oh yeah, I'm sure fire would be real helpful against something like this. Everyone stay close. Spirits love to pick off stragglers. Uh, guys? I don't think I can do this. Now quit your whining. We haven't even seen a spirit yet. I think I want to go home. I knew you were nothing but a sniveling coward. Go give your fire back to the lion turtle. Come on, man. You trying to tell me no one's pulled this scam before? No one's tried to harness fucking magic for their own fucking gain? You're just gonna let him go back and hope out of the goodness of his heart that he'll give up magic? <laughs> okay. Juan, you're back! My god, they're actual neats, sitting around and playing the pie show all day. What goodies did you snatch for us this time? Guys, he's literally feeling the burn. He wants to take from the rich and give to the lazy. It's all a metaphor, see? What did you do? You can't steal from the- Gullible college students. Really? Because I just did. <laughs> 